Hello and welcome. This is One Crafty Mom. Today I am going to bring you some anthropology inspired home decor items. The first piece of inspiration is this beautiful terracotta pedestal bowl. For the second decor piece, we're going to recreate their beautiful cork plant stand. They retail this at $98. I think we can do this for much less. For our terracotta pedestal bowl project, you'll need two separate bowls, each found at the Dollar Tree. The first, a large clear glass bowl, and the second, a condiment bowl. You will simply need to glue the small condiment bowl into the center of our large glass bowl. To do this, I used a fix-all adhesive. You could either use E6000, or in my case, I used Goop. And then, for an instant adherence, use a dot of hot glue. So these bowls have been spray painted with a cinnamon spray paint. I did about two coats, let it dry overnight. So what we're gonna do now are add some speckles. Now these speckles are, are going to add some texture to the bowl, make it more terracotta-like. So I have three different color paints that I'm using. I have a chalkboard paint and two other chalk paints. One is an ivory, one is a light brown. What I'm doing is just mixing three, three colors together and dipping it in an old toothbrush and just using my thumb and splattering it all over the bowl. I'm trying to get a just a different pattern of speckles all over just for a very natural and organic look. So what I'm going to do with the paints is just mix up some different colors every time before I splatter on the bowl just for some different color va variations between the splatterings. And then I'm also using a large flat brush. I'm dipping it in the ivory, wiping it off, the excess off onto a dry paper towel, and then just very lightly dry brushing all over the bowl. Um, it looked like the terracotta bowl on Anthropology had just a little tinge of white, and it kind of makes it look like there's some natural ridges within the terracotta, just for some added textures. Um, I'm then going back over it with some more speckles just because when I dry brush the white over the bowl it got rid of some of that speckling and this is just added layering of textures. Here I'm just using a heat gun. I have this gun on a low setting and this just helps speed up the drying process so I can add layers of paint in a more time efficient manner and I don't have to just sit and wait for the paint to dry in between layers. Just make sure the gun is on a low setting. This thing gets really hot. We don't wanna cause any bubbling or scorching or any other accidents. And that is it for our first project. For our second project, you'll need a pack of the Dollar Tree stove top covers. Here you can see I have my pans laid out. I also have my ivory chalk paint as well as some brown acrylic paints. Um, I'm just mixing those in to the ivory chalk paint um, just to get a color match close to the cork board. As you can see I already had tried one color first on the pans and it dried very darkly and it did not match the cork board whatsoever. So right now I'm doing a lighter tone just trying to color match it better and it ended up being a pretty close match. Not exact, but enough to where it blends in on the edges and it doesn't stand out from the cork board. Um, so I'm just gonna give it a quick paint over over the first original colored paint. I've also left a large space in the center of the larger pan without any paint. Uh, this is just because we're going to glue the smaller pan into the larger one so it's more stable and not as flimsy when you put a flower pot or other decorations onto your cork board plant stand. Um, if there is paint on the metal and we glue the smaller one onto the larger one, it could potentially not hold as well 
So here, once again, I'm just using my hot heat gun just to go over the smaller pan, allowing time for the paint to dry. I'm gonna do several coats just to get some good coverage and to make sure the surface is really smooth and that you can't see my brush strokes. Now, if you're going to recreate this project, you definitely don't have to do as many coats as I did. Um, I just wanted the project to feel really finished. If I were to lift up the plant stand and look underneath, I just wanted to see that it was all covered. That was just be, me being OCD, but you definitely don't have to do that. You can save yourself some time and definitely save yourself some paint because I did happen to use quite a bit of paint in this project. I also would like to add that as far as brushes go, that I do recommend using a bristled brush. Um, trying it with a foam brush, it left it a little bit more streaky and I felt like I got better coverage with the uh, bristled brush that I am using here. So here I'm just applying a few dots of E6000 and this is just an off brand. I believe this is actually called Goop so it's not E6000 but it's pretty close. Um, now I'm actually using some hot glue and this is just to give more of an instant adherence while the Goop glue is more of a long term stronger hold. So I'm just making sure that everything is nice and centered and then applying a little bit of pressure. So for this project, I have about five sheets of cork board that I'm using. Uh, the pans are quite a bit wide, so I'm having to put two sheets together. I'm just applying a little bit of clear tape to the back just so when I'm stenciling out the circumference of the larger pan, that the two don't separate on me. Um, now one thing I did really notice when I was stenciling out the circumference is that the backing of these sheets are super, super slick. So you may have to play around on what type of pen or marker that you use. The one I'm currently using did not want to stencil. So I had to go over it several, several times before I was actually able to see any color um, come off onto the sheets. Once you have your stencil drawn on, just cut it out. Next, we're gonna apply a little bit of rubbing alcohol onto a paper towel, just to give it a good once over on top of that pan. We wanna make sure there, there is no dust or oils that came off from our fingers. That way the cork sheet applies to the pan really well and won't peel up. So I originally tried to cut off the excess from the sides with an X-Acto knife. However, I do not recommend doing this. The back of the cork sheets are extremely sticky, which is really good, you want that. Um, however, it does cause a problem when you're trying to remove any excess. So it would just kind of gum up on the blade of my knife and then instead of doing a clean cut, it would kind of just grab it and tear at it. And we definitely don't want to pull off any chunks from our cork board. So what I found to work best are just some small little scissors. So what I ended up doing was taking my ruler and measuring out the width of the sides. Here you can see that I am cutting out some strips to lay along the sides of the pan. I ended up cutting about three strips out. I did cut down the third one to a smaller size just to fit it better around the circumference of the pan. As you can see, there was a little bit of edge poking up on top of the pan. So what I ended up doing was just using my scissors and I went in with the smaller ones first because they're a lot more detailed and you can get down a little bit closer and just cut off uh, some of the excess. And then I went in with my larger ones uh, just to go over it a second time. Like I said, this stuff is really, really sticky, so it did gum up on my scissors quite a bit. However, I had my rubbing alcohol out and I just went over it a couple of times with a paper towel in between my um, cuts just to kind of get off any of that gummy residue and that seemed to help quite a bit.
So on the third strip, it was a little bit longer than I needed. So what I did was just use my thumb, placed it on the first strip to gauge where I needed to cut off the third strip and just made sure that it was a flush connection between uh, both strips. So after using my scissors to go over the edges of the strips, I still felt like it wasn't as smooth as I wanted. There, it was a little bit rough and there was still some overhang sticking up. Um, so what I ended up doing were using sanding blocks. This just helped really smooth everything out for a nice finish. Um, just go very gently. You don't want to pull away the cork sheet from the pan. So I just recommend cutting going going in towards the center of the pan and definitely do not go outwards because that would pull away the cork from the pan. Next I pulled out some Mod Podge. This is a completely optional step. You definitely don't have to do this. This was just my personal preference. Um, so my goal was just to use this as a sealant um, just to make sure that if anything were to happen to the plant stand if it got knocked off the table, if it were handled roughly, that with the sealant, hopefully the paint would be less likely to chip off. For the feet of the pedestal, I am using these little basketball goals that I found at the toy section in the Dollar Tree. So I just used two here and we're only gonna use the backboards, which are made of cardboard. So there's little screws that connect the hoops to the cardboard and I'm just going to unscrew them with my little screwdriver. So I'm just gonna get an idea of where I'm gonna need to cut the backboards. I'm just gonna kinda play around with it. So I decide the best way to go about it would be to cut the bottom of the backboard off. So what I did was measure the inner pan's length and then I go back to the base to the backboard and then I cut off the same length from the bottom of it. So after I cut the bottom off of the backboard, I did a dry fit and the backboard was still a little bit too long to sit flush within that inner pan. Now I could cut off the edges of the backboard, but then I would lose width and I didn't want to make my uh, pedestal legs really uh, short because the wider they are, the more stable they are. So what I ended up doing was just cutting out notches so the very bottom of the backboard could sit within the pan, but then the edges would jut out and that would allow a little bit more stability. So this was definitely just trial by error. I did a couple cuts, then try to fit it again, and then cut some more and try to fit it again until eventually I got to a point that I liked. Then I just added it onto the other backboard and just stenciled it out for an exact duplicate. So now we're gonna fit both pieces together. This is gonna create an X for the base. To do this, we're going to create notches in each of our pieces. So I'm going to measure out exactly where I need to cut. So as you can see here, I'm just figuring out exactly where the center is on each side. We want the center lengthwise and then we want the center widthwise to create the mid-center point where each line uh, intercept. So from the midpoint down, I'm going to create a slit. So you're going to use your pencil line as a guide here. So on one side of the line, you're going to use your X-Acto knife and cut all the way through to the very bottom. And then you're going to go to the opposite side of the line and cut all the way through. Now this should be about two millimeters in width. At this point, you can just pop that little wedge of cardboard out. So next, we just wanna duplicate that with the other backboard. So for the two pieces to interlocked in the correct manner, we have to do one on the bottom. So we did a notch at the top of one, and we're going to do a notch at the bottom of the other. 
you're going to use the exact same instructions as far as what we did on the other side. Just use your pencil line as a guide. Cut on each side of the pencil line and it should be about a two millimeter wedge of cardboard in between that you take out. So I'm just gonna do a dry fit here and as you can see it's a little bit snug and I think I can go back and uh, open up the width of one of the notches a little bit more and that way I don't put too much pressure on each backboard by pushing them in together and making anything buckle. So they fit well within each other and I've got a good fit within the pan. So next what I'm going to, going to do is cut off the tops of each backboard which are actually going to be the feet of the plant stand. Uh, as you can see they're a little bit rounded and that would make the plant stand wobble. So we're just going to cut off a little bit, not a lot because we don't want to lose any height but just enough to make sure everything is flat and that way it stands stable. So now we're going to move on to you putting the cork sheets onto our plant stand legs. Now we're going to use the same method that we used for the top part. Just use the backboard as a guide. Use either a pen or a marker and just trace around it. So instead of cutting out an exact measurement of the notch, I just did a slit and I just matched the length but not the width. So we're going to do one more sheet for the back side of it. And just be very careful as far as when you're flipping the backboard onto the sheet to trace it. Um, because it, depending on which side you lay down, the cork board may not match perfectly because your notches might not be perfect, if that makes sense. Um, so just be aware of which way you put, put it and envision which way you're going to lay down the cork shape onto the backboard. Next we want to sand down a little bit uh, that shininess on the backboard. Uh, it's very slick and I want the cork sheet to adhere to it fairly well. So we want a little bit of texture and that way the cork sheet doesn't peel off of it easy. So after all that sanding everything was quite dusty and we want to make sure we get rid of all that dust before we put our cork sheet on. So I got out a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol, put it on a paper towel, and just quickly rubbed over the tops and bottoms of each backboard. So here I'm getting out my sheets of cork and I'm making sure that I have the correct side to match the correct piece of cork sheet. So it's pretty tricky to get the cork sheet to lay spot on onto the backboard so just take your time. Um, what I ended up doing is just having to go over the sides with the scissors just to get off any excess. So now I'm just going back into that notch and clearing out any excess uh, cork and then we are going to go over all the edges with the sanding block just for a really smooth and nice finish. So after we get all of our sanding done, I'm going to apply the same paint that we used for the plates. Now this is just uh, on the very edges of each of the foot stands. Uh, that's just because you can see in the middle between the cork sheets the cardboard peeking through. And this is just to give it a nice finish so everything is well blended together. So after all my edges were painted, I tried to interlock the pieces together. Now when I originally did my dry fit, I did not account for how much the cork sheets would add to the width of each piece. So that meant my notches were not wide enough and the pieces would not fit together. So what I ended up doing was I had to go back and use a Dremel tool to widen each notch. So the first Dremel bit I used was a small metal cylinder bit and I just went up and down each side of the notch just to slowly widen them up. 
Uh, secondly, I use this uh, flat sanding paper disc and that just helps smooth out uh, each notch just a little bit more, kind of refined it a little bit better. After I sanded it down really well, I try to fit it again and I thought that it was a good fit. It was really snug, but I felt like if I widened the notches up anymore that the fit would be too loose and it wouldn't be as stable. Since it was so tight, I ended up having to get out my rubber mallet and just gently tapping the two pieces together. All right, so now is the best part. So we can finally put the base of the plant stand onto the top of the plant stand and everything is coming together nicely and it's looking so good. So now I'm gonna get out my glue and we're gonna use the same glue that we used to adhere the smaller pan into the larger pan. So this is just that goop that is essentially just like the E6000. So after I applied the glue, I just used a toothpick and just smoothed it all out. That way, all of the surface area was covered and everything was nice and smooth and it had a good layer of glue on it. So you can also use your hot glue for an instant adherence. Um, but what I found to happen was that my hot glue cooled down on me too quickly and then it created a gap between the feet of the uh, pedestal and the base. And so what I ended up having to do was take it apart and then peel the hot glue off. And then I just went back and used my goop glue. It did take a little bit longer to dry, but I was okay with that. All right, guys, and there we have it. That is our anthropology inspired cork plant stand. Now, this came out even better than I could have hoped. It came out so close to the original. I am just so happy with the end results. And for only a fraction of the cost, you can't beat that. And there is our terracotta pedestal bowl inspired by anthropology and I just love the way it turned out as well. I think the faux terracotta painting technique worked out pretty well. And here I paired it with some Dollar Tree vase filler as well as some fairy lights. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had a blast recreating these anthropology dupes and I hope to see you guys again soon. If you have any recommendations of what you would like to see, be sure and comment down below. And be sure and hit that like button if you would like to see more content like this. I love to recreate home decor using Dollar Tree items. And also, please be sure and hit subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Thank you guys again. I'll see you soon.